Hey everybody, Jack here from 9to5 and welcome to another post-trade day review of my trade. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I'll make these videos quick and easy for you. So today was an active day. It is, uh, what is today? Today is Tuesday, April 24th. It's been a whirlwind day in the day job. So uh, didn't get a chance to send out the email alerts like I like to to my uh, subscribers. So if you'd like to get uh, real time-ish email alerts of the trades that I'm making during the day, go ahead and click on the link in the description below and you'll get access to my trade journal as well as my trades on a day-to-day -day basis, which is pretty freaking cool. So in today's market, uh, we had a lot of activity, really good activity for me. And I was able to open three new trades getting prepared for earnings in Facebook, uh, just getting on a standard play in FXE, as well as starting with a new strategy that I'm uh, playing with the spies. Not, I don't mean playing. I know the strategy works. It's extremely well researched and tested, but it's taking a uh, iron fly management technique to uh, high implied volatility stocks and using a laddering technique to roll into those positions. I've made a video about this strategy before in my uh, in my YouTube channel, so you can check those out. But if we go over to the portfolio tab here just for a minute, and I'll go ahead and show all my positions. So what this does is, it, as you guys have probably seen, if you've seen my videos before, it'll place the current uh, position of SPY and show where your portfolio is expected to uh, profit or lo lose at different movements of the SPY over the course of the next 52 days. Let me, so you can see that there. So this is the one standard deviation mark and the two standard deviation marks, but we won't go and belabor all those points. Let's go ahead and just talk about the new trades that went on. Uh, before we get there though, I wanna show you a couple of big moves here. So an XLI, which I think is the industrial sector of the, of the market. I put this trade on a little bit further back here and it just went against me from the beginning. And then look at this move it had today. So it went down significantly. It started to recover a little bit towards the end of the day. So my position picked up a lot. It picked up $43 today alone, which was my overall gain at 55. So it started to make that recovery on the initial downturn, but it really got back into the green today. And I'm starting to make some progress back on my XLE trade. So this is at the point of being an inverted strangle. And I'm doing that because I'm managing consistently. You know, I'm doing my uh, mechanics of rolling up the puts as the stock price has uh, rallied. And now you can see my puts are actually higher than my calls, which makes it an inverted trade, which is totally fine. But what I'm looking at is tracking my trade journal. I'm looking to get back to a break-even scratch on this trade. And so a couple more days like this where we have that 1% 1, 1 plus move down gets me back into that range where I really want it to be. If it falls into this range, it, I should be able to get a small winner or a scratch. And even if it's a, um, a scratch or a small loser, I'll be fine to close that one out because it could have been much worse without the management. Because you can see here, the original strangle would have been something like this. And so the price of the stock has moved all the way over there. So no matter what, by getting back to a, a close to a scratch is a good thing for me. So the trades today, like I had mentioned, I did open up, not XLE, I meant FXE. Opened up an iron fly in FXE. I did that because I like to have diversification in non-correlated asset classes. And FXE is a currency, it's very lowly correlated to the market. Well, I say that. And then you, you look here on your Tastyworks platform. Correlation is one where you have historical expectations. You kind of know historically bonds are and are you know negatively correlated to the market. But then some days you'll have a three month period where they'll be highly correlated. And here as well in the uh, currencies, there's no exact reason why even if the dollar is weaker, it doesn't necessarily you know, necessitate that the market is getting weaker. However, in this case, uh, we do have a 0.77 correlation, which is a fairly high correlation. So that means when the market's going up, uh, FXE or uh, the euro is going up. So I placed an iron fly in this one. You know, currencies tend to have uh, not the craziest swings. So uh, having that uh, juicy premium in the middle and a decent uh, protection. I like to set my iron flies up. Let me see if I can pop into the trade tab for this guy. Here you go, you can see this here. I'm sorry, that's XLE, FXE. So you should be able to see, I go out 52 days. That's a little bit on the long side, but uh, it's better than 
being on the short side because I, I do like to have my trades work longer and just give me more opportunities to be right. So here I'm just going to scroll around and let the deltas fill in. I like to go out right around that one standard deviation mark on both sides and purchase legs there. Uh, that just gives me a nice standard way of going about putting these things on. I can put them on from my phone or from my desktop and kind of very easily see uh, where it is. Now here you can see I do have a $1 spread in my short strikes, 117, 118. So that's $1 wide simply because at the time when I placed the trade, uh, it, it was just like this. It's trading really right in the middle of the strikes. And I didn't feel like going in and, uh, and creating that, uh, that directional pull. So I went ahead and just split the difference. In SPY, same deal. Uh, I have a very solid uh, overall, or let me show you my overall portfolio here. My overall portfolio delta is hanging out right at that 0.42, so it's essentially zero, uh, given that it's a $25,000 account. So I'm happy here. Uh, I, I'll continue to play some delta neutral trades. A lot of great research has been coming out showing just the continued support of neutral trades. Uh, so I don't like picking direction. I'm normally wrong when I do. Luckily, with trading options, you don't have to. So here you go. Uh, just a little bit of down move since I placed that trade. So 1.3% down today. Let's go ahead and see the movement throughout the day today. Let's expand that out. So I probably placed it towards the high of the day and it came down a little bit. No worries at all. And then I believe I also placed one Facebook earnings play. So this is a little uncharacteristic of me. Uh, this was me being a little bit saucy today. I think I was in a, a meeting that went a little bit too long and I decided I needed some action in my life. So I'm gonna put on a one day trade for Facebook. So if we look here, if I go back into the, let me just make sure it's selected, go into the trade tab. They give you a very helpful little E button here, which shows you the earnings tracker. So a couple things that uh, Tastyworks does to make your life easier is, Whenever there's an earnings event coming up on a, close to a stock, I think it's about two to three weeks away, they start to uh, give you a heads up about it. Um, they'll place an indicator there so you don't um, mess up and buy a position right before earnings. And then they also have this earnings tab here where you can see uh, the calendar and the details. So this is going to be tomorrow, will be announced tomorrow after the market closed. Shoot. I thought it said today after the market closed. So there you go. You can still make money in options trading, even if you're not perfect. So I really would have wanted to put this trade on tomorrow, not today. Um, so pay attention when you open your trades. But we'll see how this goes anyways. I'll still hold it through, no problem at all. And when I come in the day after earnings, we should see this volatility level right now. Let me, there's volatility right now, which is at the 82nd percentile. Uh, that should drop down significantly because the uncertainty around the earnings event will be over. We'll know what's going on. So there's no reason for that fear or that uncertainty in the market. And that should bring this trade down to a reasonable level where we should be able to get out with a nice profit. So those are the three trades today. I'll go ahead and uh, blast the link out to this video to my email subscribers. And again, if you haven't subscribed yet to my trade journal and uh, trade tracking emails like this video here is replacing today, uh, go ahead and click on the link in the description below. I look forward to uh, connecting with you and helping you out with your trades as we go forward in this journey. Have a good one, guys.